Hi everybody. Continuing on from the last video where we epoxied up the uh, bottom cowl air inlet backsides to sort of match up with the engine baffles so that we can install some uh, baffle rubber baffling material. We are now we have let the we have let the epoxy dry and so now what we're going to do is now sort of do a little test fit and then we've got to drill some holes and actually secure the baffling material in place. We can't really test fit, test fit until that happens. Uh, so yeah, it's just going to be about sanding down the excess and as there is, as there is a lot of excess. And then we are going to clamp the rubber baffle material in place along with the metal uh, attachment piece and then drill holes through the cowl and the rubber and the attachment piece. And then we will countersink. And I think, you know what, actually now that that makes, now this actually starts to make a little bit of sense. Like why the heck, I've, I've been wondering about it forever. Why the heck did they make you add all this epoxy when they could just reform the cowl to be the exact same shape, the exact shape that you need? Well, problem part of it is that you do need to countersink some holes because you will be putting screws in there to hold the baffling in place and so you have to countersink them because you want them to be flat is you want the airflow to be smooth and perfect in fact I've been I you know I've been reading other people's uh, accounts and they go as far as you know if it's perfect and you know you're not going to need to take it off anymore epoxy over the screw head so that it's perfectly flat right stuff like that um, real quick so while you're after it's done to make sure that you still have perfectly smooth air you are going to be sanding off a lot of the regular cowl as you want to make sort of a swooping curve of the air inlet back in so that it meets back to where this cowl material is going to be going backwards right so you've added a lot of material to the backside and again this is not something that you could do unless you were to form the cowl that way I think that the excess material helps, you know, make it thick so that as you countersink, you don't have to worry about weakening the fiberglass. That's my guess. Oh, let's see what's going on. Uh, RV15 came out. Everyone's been asking me what I think. I think it looks good. I think they're going to have to do a crap ton of test flying because Vans has never done a high wing, so... Who knows how many iterations they may have to go through a whole second plane, maybe a third. You don't know. Hey, we've gone from low wings for 50 years. Let's make some high wings. How difficult could it be? I do. I think it looks good, though. Side by side, two seater. As long as they give me enough room so that I can stretch out and sleep in the back. And that's one thing about, like, Javron. Javron's that company I keep talking about that's from Minnesota, and they make uh, Super Club, Super Cub clones. They make now a four-seat uh, version, kind of looks like a bear hawk, and it's big enough in the back to actually sleep in, and that's and that's what I'm talking about. Vans, I need a one-piece <laughs> camping set. Will I build it? Maybe. Problem is, at this point, probably won't even have the whole kit and everything ready for you know, including the finishing kit for like, oh God, it could be five years. I mean, they announced the RV, tw uh, uh, the 14 in <clears throat> 2012. I don't think the first one got flying in, you know, for five years. So as, as good as it looks, I think if I do build a second plane, it'll probably be a Javron, but we'll see. All right, so there I am. So you can see I'm, so I've got the holes drilled, and so now it's just a matter of countersinking and screwing them in. Sorry for the horrible lighting. Again, the director of photography is fired. The one thing that is a little bit of a pain in the butt is I've got a kind of a bigger drill, so that air inlet's not that big, and you need to get the countersinking cage in there, and that's pretty long. And that drill that I've got is pretty long. So the only what you really need is you need a small air drill to be to be able to get in there. Now this big drill does technically fit, technically, 
<clears throat> but it's but it's close. And you can see I've actually got my D uh, my chamfering tool out to uh, do a little bit of work where that drill just sort of didn't get it quite right. All right, so I thought this video was going to be working on the canopy. It was not. That's technically in the next video. So thank you for joining me, everyone. Uh, after this, we're going to do some test fitting later, but just a small thing. It doesn't fit. We have to go back and sand a bunch of material off, which I didn't know until after this, as those things happen. So thank you for joining me. See you soon.